grace to you and mercy and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ. The word of our God that we consider together this morning is today's gospel from Matthew chapter 22. Jesus' parable, his story about a king who invited people to a wedding banquet for his son. How do you feel about invitations? Well, that probably depends, doesn't it? Depends on what you're being invited to. If a card in the mail invites you to a free meal together with a lengthy sales presentation on something that you don't want, you're likely not going to go. If you get invited to a friend's birthday party or a, a family wedding, that might find you eagerly looking forward to that special occasion. Suppose you would get a phone call saying, you remember that contest you entered some months back? Well, congratulations, you won. You're invited to go to the Super Bowl. First class airfare, luxury hotels, 50 yard line seats, and it's all free. And you say, well, my next six month dentist checkup is that week, so I think I'll pass, maybe some other time. Wouldn't it be crazy to turn down a once in a lifetime invitation like that for a reason like that? Jesus told a story about an amazing invitation that so many rejected. A king invited the people of his land to a wedding banquet for his son. Awaiting them was a lavish meal in the palace. They would likely never receive an invitation to something that special ever again. Who would say no to that? But when the king sent out his servants to remind the invited guests that everything was ready, no one wanted to come. The king was concerned and sent out still more servants, reminding them of the grand experience that awaited them. And he said, everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But then things got ugly. Some of those who had been invited simply ignored the king's servants and they, they walked away to their work in the fields or their place of business. Others treated the king's servants with disdain and even killed some of them. The king couldn't just let that go. If they were going to reject his kindness, they would have to deal with his justice. He sent his soldiers to punish the rebellion. But amazingly, this king would not give up. He sent his servants out again, telling them to search for anyone and everyone that they could find and invite them to the banquet. And finally, people came. And the banquet hall was filled with guests who were enjoying the extravagant gifts that the king had prepared. Who's the king in Jesus' story? It is God, our Heavenly Father. And from the time he said, Adam, where are you? He has been calling sinners to his side. Not to punish us for our sins, but to save us. He invites us to the greatest honor that we can ever receive, the banquet of his forgiving mercy and rescue from our sins. And this invitation is not just for a select few. It is for all. God wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. And that means that you and I have definitely been invited and this is no ordinary invitation. It is a vast array 
of extravagant gifts of his grace. God's prophet Isaiah pictured it this way in our first reading. The Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats, and the finest of wines. And the king himself paid the high cost of this banquet. In this case, the king paid the cost of his own son, whom he sent to live for us and to die for us. Our sinfulness would have forever disqualified us from his presence. So our Savior paid our way as he gave his own life because the wages of our sin is death. And now look what is awaiting all of those who come in faith to the Heavenly Father's feast. Isaiah again pictures it like this. On this mountain, he will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples. He will swallow up death forever. The sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. God has prepared an eternity of no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Those who are at his heavenly banquet will never again hunger or thirst for anything, but will be filled with joy in his presence forever. Everything is ready. He is inviting you. He even sends his Holy Spirit so that you will believe that it is for you. So, what will we say to God's invitation? Is it possible that we would say no to God's amazing grace? Jesus' story tells us that it can happen. Jesus said, many are invited, but few are chosen. Few are chosen not because God plays favorites, not because he only wants some there. Few are chosen because so many say no. God wants everyone to live in his peace. But many do not want that for themselves. You and I likely know people who do not want what God wants for them because they want something else instead. We know that that can happen to us too. Jesus told of those in this parable who chose their work in the fields or their place of business instead of the king's banquet. Although it was not an evil or terrible choice they were making. Work, of course, is something good, something necessary. But in this case, they were choosing the good instead of what is far better and what is most necessary. And that's where you and I need to be careful, too. We can begin to focus on those things that have limited temporary value instead of on the one treasure that has greatest eternal value. It can be a gradual letting go of what is most needed. As we become busier and busier, and spiritual concerns slip into the background. When there are so many things that we can do right now, eternity can seem so far away, and seeking God's will gets put off for another time. And we start to say no to God's invitation. That king in Jesus' story kept sending servants to keep on inviting. And God does that too. God invites us each week to gather in his house. He gathers us around his holy word, and as we hear and learn it, he's presenting to us the preview of the eternal banquet of his grace that awaits us. But don't think of it as a tiny morsel. It is a feast of rich spiritual food that God presents before us, including forgiveness, full and free. 
in the suffering and death and resurrection of his own son. As God's full name, Father, sent us back to that day when he personally placed his name upon us in our baptisms, when he created faith in our hearts, when he gave to us a brand new identity as his own child. In the bread and the wine of Holy Communion, he allows us to touch and to taste the very proof of his saving love, our Savior's true body and blood offered upon the cross. God presents this vast assortment of spiritual food to strengthen us for the spiritual battles and struggles that we face every day. He lifts us above the busyness and the weariness of our violent world with the sure hope of what is waiting for us. Everything is ready. God is inviting you. Don't say no. Don't put it off for another time. Come now, today and always, to receive the grace that God gives for life and for eternal life. And with these gifts that are so lavish and costly, we must come appropriately. After the king sent out his servants that final time, and finally the wedding hall was filled with guests, Jesus said both the good and the bad, washed clean in the forgiving love of God that is always greater than any sin. But then the king noticed something, noticed one guest who was not dressed appropriately in wedding clothes. There is only one way to be appropriately present in the presence of the holy and almighty God of heaven. And that is humble and repentant faith. This man evidently decided he didn't want or need that. But the king disagreed. Ordered his servants to tie this man up and to expel him from the banquet. And he found himself in a place of pain so terrible that he could only gnash his teeth as he eternally regretted throwing away the joy and the blessing that the King of Heaven had prepared for him. You and I need those spiritual wedding clothes that Jesus speaks of too. How do we get them? Well, we do not come into God's presence dressed in our own goodness. We dare not come expecting that God will accept us just the way we are, saying, God, I know this isn't exactly right, but I'm going to keep on doing it, so you'll just have to accept me the way I am. We must not tell God, well, I know that you want me to serve you in faith, but, but God, I'm sure that you understand how busy I am right now. I'll do that some other time. The only way into the presence of our God is humble, repentant faith. We come, as a hymn says, just as I am, without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me. We come to him, sins and all, unworthy and weak and weary and worn. But God's love does not leave us as he found us. God's love forgives us and renews us. God covers us in the righteousness of Jesus that becomes our own by faith. Our second reading talked about that righteousness that is by faith from first to last. Clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, the Heavenly Father declares you holy and blameless in his sight covered in the righteousness of Jesus, he gives you a brand new identity and brand new desires to listen to and to live by his will. In the hymn right before the sermon, we sang, Jesus, your blood and righteousness, my beauty are, my glorious dress. God himself 
prepares you to come appropriately into his presence as he covers you in the righteousness of Jesus. By faith, as you are clothed in that righteousness of Christ, you are God's welcome guest forever. That is what God wants for you. He has prepared his banquet of forgiving love and life now and forever in Christ. Everything is ready. You are invited to the banquet of God's grace. So come and stay and be forever blessed. Amen.